Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel if you've never been here before. Uh, I don't normally do streaming of Netrunner, but I figured might as well. Uh, there's not a whole lot of people doing it nowadays, and I really miss Kiv's stream. But he's not around anymore, so I'm going to have to pick up the slack and do some streaming myself. Uh... Streaming. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do... Uh, we'll start with some Corp games. Um, and I'm going to pick this Argus deck that I put together. This is just... I mean, I don't really know what... I've just been playing casually for the last two years. So I don't really know kind of what everyone's doing. I got kind of some ideas. So here's my Argus deck. I just threw something together. I put some cool stuff in here. Got, like, you know, a bunch of one-ofs, some hard-hitting news, got some arc lockdowns, you need those. Got Data Raven, reversed account, snare. I only could fit, I want more snares, but I ran out of influence, and it's nice to have one, right? Uh, so that's cool. We'll stick with that. And, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll come up with some ideas for uh, ways to improve this here. Uh, I was really going for, like, an economic warfare Argus and try to rush behind the uh, the threat of economic warfare. Um, as it is, you know, and then do the whole hard-hitting news, but I don't know, maybe I will refine it back to that and run just hard-hitting news and data ravens. Um, Arc Lockdown's a really hard slot to fit in in Argus. Um, because Data Raven is so good. Uh, it's a really weird ID, you know? It, um, it really... Actually, hold on just a sec. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring up the old Netrunner DB here so we can keep this, uh, so we can keep this window open. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, hey, we got... Hey! Hey, it's Anthony. That's awesome. He's like, who are you talking about? Who? <laughs> you know... He's like, why, why are you, <laughs> okay, oh, that's funny, all right, <laughs> uh, he runs, uh, okay, so a 419 deck, okay, this deck is definitely not prepared to deal with 419, primarily because um, I don't have, uh, um, I don't have any response to Amakua, but primarily being, uh, CSV, so that's going to be difficult. Um, this hand is pretty bad. I got, I got two agendas, uh, and I don't really want that many agendas. Um, so let's, I don't know, for, you know, you really do want to go fast against 419. This is a really tough deck to build. Or, or to play against, rather. Uh, ripping for store champs. Uh, reversed accounts. All right, that's good. Um, let's do a draw. Drat. Uh, so we're going to throw down a data raven. Uh Ah, this is tough, because we're going to open ourselves up to a siphon, which I don't really want. So, we'll put the raven over HQ. Uh, I'm not going to pay one. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw uh, my price deck down. That seems pretty reasonable. Uh, that way, you know, if he checks the price deck thinking it's Rashida... 
then uh, we still get the tag and we still get the econ warfare. Now this does open us up for a siphon, a three carat siphon, which isn't amazing. But we get to land our tag, which is nice. And <laughs> nice. Yep. So he's going to siphon. And that leaves him with the tag. Interesting. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and Econ Warfare. Um, and... I guess we'll just credit up. I am kind of, I don't know. He siphoned when I was at three. I don't, is that the right move? I don't really know. That's a tough one. And he's got a daily cast. It's all right. Um, so we've got the arc lockdown for the crowdfundings. Credit, credit. Jeez. We've got just nothing. What do I drop? I don't want to drop Rashida. Ooh, man, that's a tough one. And I don't really want to drop the reversed accounts either. This Oak Town is, like, really useless in our hands. But I don't think I actually have... I didn't put any uh, recursion in this deck at all. Now that we're facing a good deck, I think we're going to lose. I don't really want to install anything. Huh. Well, I guess we dumped the reversed accounts. It's really painful, but you got to save the arc lockdowns for uh, crowdfunding, you know? I mean, you got to assume he's running crowdfunding. And I can't even start scoring until I get like two ice. Draw. And then, uh, yeah, we'll pay one to. Uh, not reveal it. Hopefully, maybe he'll just respect that price that we threw down. Or maybe he won't. Oh, no, he's got falsified. So, he blows his falsified, uh, seeing if it's price sec, and then he gets to destroy it, which is pretty painful. Uh, and I have my other Rashida, too. Man, I just need ice. No more action. What's he got here? Oh, <laughs> it's an SDS drone deployment. Huh. Please give me an ice. No. Yeah, we'll pay one. And then, uh... Ugh. What do you do? Uh, gain a credit, drop consulting. Most of the cards I would want to consult, I already have in hand. But the big problem is, is that I've got these agendas and I just cannot score them. Hmm. It definitely seems in line with the objective of Argus to um, pursue scoring agendas as fast as possible. I'm only running 15 ice in this deck. Um, so it looks like he's going to let us have the Rashida. Start. Draw 10,000 cards. Cool. Um, and we have three agendas now. I'm going to go ahead and throw that into a new remote. We're going to pay one to prevent its exposure. And I am basically going to lose all my stuff now. Install into server 4. And advance. Do we, I guess I guess we have to drop the arc lockdown at this point, huh? And then uh, I don't want to drop this econ warfare, but I don't really have a choice. I need to keep high profile target. It's kind of my win condition, even though I only have one in the deck. I'm really sad that I drew this one so early. Uh and I guess there's no reason bluffing NGO when I have a huge number of actual agendas to score. Sure, yeah, whatever. I mean, I guess one of the advantages to uh, Data Raven is it's pretty, uh, you know, immune to... Uh, Uh, 
Ugh. Hmm. So he's gonna take the tag. That's cool for us. So I'm gonna... Econ Warfare. Credit. Hard hitting news. I'll pay one. Because he can get to four. Enter. Well, so he can clear three of the tags. But he can't actually draw. I might actually just straight up win off of this. <laughs> That's not what I expected. <laughs> huh, interesting. I thought for sure I was just in the dumps, man. All right, cool. So he draws and uh, and uses them all, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, okay, wow. This opens up a excellent window. So we'll install... Install into server 4, install over server 4, and advance. So we don't we don't get the kill. He managed to get out of the kill by using up one of his bankrolls, which was totally worth it. And uh, we finally drew into an ice, and now we can start scoring agendas. Um, unfortunately, if he wants to siphon us, he can, and then steal that agenda. Okay, there's his crowdfunding. Sure. Should I put this Hortum over HQ? Not yet. Hmm. So, I mean, this isn't the best remote here, Data Raven Enigma. But, it, I don't really want to try to push out the SDS drone deployment either, even though he is somewhat weak at this point. An inside job could just straight up steal it for him, and I don't have hard hitting news on hand. I actually only have two in the deck, so um, let's throw the Hortum over HQ. Uh, sure, we'll pay one. And then we'll install this into server four, and we'll advance it one time. And uh, we could possibly get a uh, a Data Raven off on him. Or maybe try to, you know, get him to use this siphon here. And then, you know, we'll gain it for s 5 instead of 8. But it's probably more valuable for the bait at this point than it is for the actual run. Uh, let's see. I have an armed intimidation and I have an SDS drone deployment. So, if he runs the Data Raven... So, if I, if I res Hortum... That'll take me to three credits, and I can still res Enigma. So I think I'm going to go for that. Gain one and the run. That's okay. Then we'll res an Enigma. Force him to lose a click and end the run. Maybe we can bait out an inside job, too. Man, I really need, like, a preemptive action or something. I got a bunch of weird cards in a weird order. Like, Rashida is an amazing card, but only if you can get an ice. Cool beans. Uh, okay. So I'm going to credit, advance, res, gain eight, and I'm going to go ahead and throw Rashida into server four. Which is pretty good. I mean, we don't really lose anything if if, uh, if he runs it. It's really weird how, like, kind of empty his board state is. He's going to inside job HQ, huh? Okay. Interesting. We'll res the data raven. See how he feels about that. He's going to take a tag. Trace three. What if he has six credits? Huh. Um. What, does he have another inside job? Probably not. So, 
I could probably convince him to spend most of his money here. What do I want to do? A little bit extra? Two, one. Let's do two. And then the Rashida will take us back up to four. I mean, nobody plays drive-by anymore, right? Okay. Suck up some of his cash. He might get the SDS. Oh, he got the SDS. That's too good. He didn't steal it. Oh, wait. Is he going to Apocalypse? Oh, that's so sad. No action. Apocalypse 419. Hmm. Sure. Well, that's fine. So I lose four of my, you know, however many ice. Credit, credit. Install over HQ. No, we won't avoid the credit. Hmm. We actually have a Chrissium for that exact scenario. It's really hard. You know, it's really hard to justify running things that kind of prevent the status of runs in Argus since you don't mind the runner actually making runs in Argus. Um, it's real difficult. Let's see what we got here. Draw. Draw. And too big to fail. That feels like a reasonable card. Oh, man. Here comes the Makua. He knows it's Enigma, too, so he just runs twice and then he... Oh, no. He doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough to siphon yet. Oh, the pain. The turtle is so good. Do we want to res Enigma at this point? Man, if you're really trying to just beat down a corp, AI Breakers and Apocalypse is the way to go. Uh, let's see. Enigma costs some credit. Let's do it. Oh, it triggers Sapper. Damn it! But he can't afford to break the sapper and also trash it because I res that enigma. <laughs> Thank God. All right. So let's go. God, where are we even going to put this? Let's do Tythonium over R&D. He's going to siphon us. And it's gonna hurt. But we could get that Tythonium, so uh, we can we could blow our Oaktown to res the Tythonium. I mean, it's less than optimal, but if it does force him to trash his Makua, I mean that's that's okay. I mean, this is the worst, right? Like, you don't when you're playing a rush deck, you don't want to have to sit here and defend archives. <sighs> How's the, vi how's the vision on this? Should I make this a little bit bigger? That's probably better, right? So he's going to embezzle into it. Oh, man, look at that. That's weird. So what do you think he's going for? Operations or assets? Uh, operations. Okay, so that gets rid of my high-profile target, and I don't have a way to get it back. <laughs> See... You gotta put at least one archive memories in this deck. It's just fall you're falling to pieces, you know? You got uh you got all sorts of stuff um that you have to have. Oh cool, a snare. Oh man, he is going all in on the apocalypse. Look at that. Eater apocalypse. Huh, what do you do about AI breakers, huh? Is he not going to steal the SDS? He's just going to wait. 
interesting. He is running a high risk here. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so he's saving on the SDS, which is totally worth it. Oh, so he finally decided to steal it. And he's just running this huge risk that I don't draw another high-profile target, which um, I totally would if I had one. Draw. Credit, credit. But I only have, I mean, that, that makes sense that you really ought to have two in a deck like this, right? Uh, instead of a consulting visit. Hmm. I think I'll do that. So what has he got? Two tags here. Oh my goodness, I have a hedge fund, finally. Oh, he has no more turtle. Interesting, but he does have eater and he theoretically has a third inside job. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw. We're going to hedge fund, and he's probably got siphon, although he can't siphon right away. So we'll go ahead and throw this Tythonium in the remote. Uh, what do you think he's running, paperclip? Do I care if he sees this? Yes. Oh, that 419 tax is incredible. Incredibly good. Sure gamble. Oh, yeah. So we throw down the border control. Ooh, or the Hordem. You know what we ought to do? Throw down the Hordem over the remote. I mean, he's got one more apocalypse, right? This armed intimidation isn't going to advance our win condition in any way. We should just wait till we draw a hostile. There's no rush. Instead, we throw the border control over HQ. And that turns off siphons in an emergency. We'll throw this over uh, server 5 and gain a credit. A little bit poor, but... Um, we can Tythonium, ah, uh, yeah, that sucks. I don't, I, I don't want to be using Tythonium right now. I mean, we just run the risk of just straight up losing here. I mean, even, even if he hits our hostiles and doesn't win, it's going to be, it's going to be bad. Yep, there's our hostile, so... That was a tough situation. You know, you don't want to... I didn't want to let him into R&D, but... I'm not going to... I'm not going to freaking dump my Oaktown uh, for that Tythonium. So that's, that's kind of a tough choice there. Oh, ah, what a brutal game, man. 419 is amazing. See, if you get... If you get a CVS, it's not really the end of the world. Uh, because you can you can really dunk the turtle with a with a, a cyberdex virus suite. Ah, so what do we do here? We're thinking we want two high profile targets. We'll drop the consulting visit. Probably need a couple more pieces of ice, but we're running a very large amount of agendas. Let's see if we can drop an agenda to get an extra SDS in there. That seems pretty good. Uh, we'll drop an Oak Town to put in an extra SDS drone deployment. That's what? It, oh, I just dropped, I just dropped four points for three, so that's not going to be enough. I actually like Oak Town a lot more. I see. That's not going to be as simple of a modification as I thought it would be. Um. Huh. I actually like Beanstalk a lot in here, too. Let's drop down two Rashidas. I guess that was the whole reason I had the Armed Intimidation. It was mostly just because I needed another two-point agenda. Am I short on cards? I've only removed... What did I remove? I didn't remove that much stuff, did I? The, you know, we kind of the strategy, I guess, of this deck is is we're kind of going for this end game 
well, not even really an end game where we can just we can just throw price X into uh, into a remote and they're a big pain in the butt. What is it? Uh, preemptive preemptive action. So you throw one of those in there, and uh, we really need look at so here. This is a problem. Like our ice. Like I'm going for all sorts of big ice here. We got Tithoniums. We've got sappers. You know, we we need to we need to slow this down. So we're gonna drop down to one archer and one Tithonium, and we're gonna put in uh, just three ice walls. Uh, and that takes us up to 16 ice, and more importantly, it kind of put it kind of gives us that that baseline there. Um, you know, I don't really know if that's where we want to end up in the end. And we have no more influence left, so I can't fit in a archive memories, which I would very much like. Um, so we could throw in a consulting visit, or we could throw in an NGO, a Chrysium, a Beanstalk. Let's just do an NGO. Why is this standard illegal? Oh, wait. Okay, sorry. I was confused w what happened here. Wait, why are our agendas all whacked? Because I ended up taking out all my Oak Towns accidentally. Okay, so we have three Atlas, three Oak Town, a Hostel. Okay, so what happened? I was wondering why. I was like, was my deck not 49 cards? Hi, dear. What are you looking for? Yeah, I'm just streaming. But I don't have a video. Yeah. Uh, so I have to drop something. Let's drop... Wait, this is weird. I kind of want that third economic warfare, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. So we're back to where we were, except for we have one extra ice in the deck. And somehow I went down an NG. Oh, wait. I, like, dropped the Rashida. I'm confused. Oh, I added a preemptive action. I see. Huh. Do I really need two arc lockdowns? Let's just do one, and we'll see how that goes. All right. Let's save this. I'm going to give it another go. Uh, I just got to uh, use the bathroom. I'll be right back. All right, so let's give this slightly altered version. I didn't really, <laughs> I was so focused on um, what was going on, I didn't even give that guy a proper GG. Well, I mean, I did give him a proper GG, but I didn't give him a super friendly GG. You know, I think that's really important. We're a small community of all that remains of Netrunner. 
and there's no reason not to be super nice to each other. Hey yo. All right, this is pretty good. A kit peddler deck. I love it. So he's probably running Angolo or Inversicator. Inversificator? I don't actually know how Kit looks right now at all. She's probably got Riziki though. Um, that seems pretty, uh, pretty reasonable. Let's go ahead and score out a Hostile. You know, this is one of the few decks that I think is actually really trying to play Rush. Um, Argus, uh, because, oh, uh, like, the outfit, for example, now benefits from bad putt removal with a roughneck repair squad. Oh, employee strike, jeez. Oh, that's beautiful. You really gotta get that employee strike, you know. Lose a Rashida. Okay. And we should probably Chrissium R&D. Yep, there's the Riziki. Ah... Uh, Huh. So he goes up to six, and then he credit, remove, remove, remove. I mean, I should probably blow this hard hitting news now while I have the chance. Um, so, hedge fund. I'll just go ahead and throw this Chrissy in here now. Uh, well, huh, do I go for the SDS? We'll go ahead and throw that over a new remote, and then we'll hit him with the hard-hitting news at plus two. And, I mean, it's definitely not going to be a kill, but hopefully it just slows him down a little bit, and we can try to score this SDS behind it. Here's hoping. And if he can't find his breakers in time, um, then uh, we get to kill his Rizeki, which is, I don't know, reasonable, I guess. Draw and remove two. Interesting. Okay. Well, that actually leaves us a pretty reasonable opening on the high-profile target front. Uh, we get to clear out his hand. Sure, we'll play that, see what we got. Test run and all of the artists. Hmm. We'll install this over... Server 2, and we'll install this into Server 2. This is kind of a tough situation, because I can't afford the Data Raven and the Ice Wall, but maybe I draw into, like, NGO or something like that. What would I really want right now? Another hard-hitting, uh, or another high-profile target. So that's definitely a case for having two high-profile targets in your deck, and then I have a 1 in 40 chance right now. Of just straight up winning the game. Oh, unless he clears a tag. And then he's fine. But uh, that, but if he clears a tag, that increases my odds of scoring this agenda. Which is pretty good. So I go advance, advance, take a credit, and then I can afford Data Raven and Ice Wall. He still has E-Strike on the table. And he steals an Atlas. Good for him. At least that increases my odds of drawing uh, another high-profile target, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what do we got? Oh, or hey, a hostile. That's great. So let's do install. Yeah, we want to score this, right? Install, advance, advance, score. And that turns off the E-Strike, which is good. And uh, this is our only SDS. Isn't that crazy that we've drawn SDS drone deployment every single game? Um, and I only have one in my deck. I, I don't mind drawing it. I really like it as a card. Um, SDS is fantastic. Uh, it's one of those five threes that, like, it's good, because it does a good thing, and it's worth three points. Like, a lot of the times, you just want to score it just because it's worth three points. Uh, Alright, so, ugh, jeez, Oaktown, huh? 
All right, let's go advance, advance, and we'll throw a Crecium onto R&D. I just realized that that was a super bad idea <laughs> because I have an Oak Town in hand <laughs> and he's got to run it. <laughs> Whoops. Poker face. You know, I'm feeling like Kit's best cards are stim hacks. Um, they really solve that shaper problem, being able to just kind of get up and get running. Uh, and, and when Corpse will prey on that by uh, icing up remotes. Um, Alright, there's his Angolo. And if he stim hacks this, I mean, that's hot. That's a hot move. And then he, uh, I don't know. Takes a data raven tag. Uh. But he's got now. If he doesn't steal this right now, oh, that's bad. Oh, okay. So he, okay. So he, he undoes. That's that's good. Yeah, he doesn't want me. Uh, he doesn't want me SDSing his Angolo. So I'm guess I'm guessing that means he's probably he knows he can't run it and he doesn't want to lose it. Uh, which, I mean, that's great. Uh, and that means that uh, after we score it, uh, we can basically threaten the victory by throwing out this Oak Town. Okay, he did not run. He did not run uh, the remote. So he's got one more click, though. So if I spend three here... Okay, I'm good. So I'm going to go ahead and res this to turn off his dirty laundry. It's it's really painful. I can't really afford it right now, but whatever. It does deny him th uh, three credits. Well, ac no, no, no. It actually denies him five credits because he already paid the two for the dirty laundry. Huh. And then we leak more off of R&D. Oh, right, and then two of those credit, those three credits were bad pups, so he only has one. So that was, that was actually a lot better than I thought it was. Okay, so here's the question, and this is a, a really hard one to think about. Is my situation currently better than it was, sorry, rather, is his situation worse than it was last turn? Um, basically, if, if his best option, well, it is, well, let me because I know he has N'Golo and he drew some cards. Um, but he still can't afford to get in. Um, I really don't want to pop this SDS without his N'Golo being on the table. So what does he do? So he was going to dirty laundry. And then run with N'Golo. Ah. <sighs> So Angolo costs him three credits to break through the ice wall. Maybe I should just blow up his Riziki right now. It will deny him effectively two credits over the course of these next two turns. I try to score uh, score the game out. So um, if I do install advance advance... Um, on the Oak Town renovation, I can afford to protect both of these, and he he can still steal it. He's just gonna take some tags from the Data Raven, but forcing him through the Data Raven is probably worth it. What's he What's he doing? What's he doing? What is this? What is this? What's that? He's He's swapping out. What's he doing? Where'd that come from? Did he accidentally drop that from his... Oh. Did he have too many cards in hand? You can see I haven't activated my Windows 10 because I'm a bad person. I just rebuilt this machine. Okay. Sounds good, bro. All 
call you. He might have a, a prompt sitting open or something like that. It feels kind of sad using an SDS drone deployment on a Riziki. Um, you don't really, I mean, blowing up a Rizeki is not really, like, you know, the greatest thing in the whole world, but getting three agenda points is, and, uh, it does effectively deny him some econ. I mean, he's still got his N'Golo set up, but as it is right now, he has to be able to afford the N'Golo and, uh, and break everything. So, he can just, he can bum rush it if he can get, if he can get enough money to get his N'Golo. He might be able to. Another Rizeki. Oh, all right. That's great news for me. Assuming he doesn't steal my Oak Town. <laughs> be like legwork to me or something. That would be amazing. Well, that'd be kind of scary because I have the whole hard hitting news thing going on. Oh, too big to fail. That's great. Uh, I still think I'm going to slam the Oak Town. Uh, which gives me exactly enough money to do Data Raven Ice Wall. Plus, uh, um, click advance, advance next turn. Um, so he has to throw down his N'Golo. So his turn has to be like, dirty laundry, sure gamble, install N'Golo, run. Or install, click, click, install N'Golo, stim hack or something. Sure, test run N'Golo. Okay. Stim hack. You got a stim hack. Nice. All right, so this isn't that good. He still takes a tag. Whatever. We still res we still res all this stuff, and this is the reason we have too big to fail in our deck is when we when we run ourselves down to zero from it's basically like our, our super beanstalk royalties, right? We run ourselves down to zero from Uh okay, so he He takes a tag, he boosts and breaks Sorry, he, okay, so he uses kit to make that be a code gate, yep, and then he boosts and breaks, and then we've got a ice wall, which just costs him three more for nothing. I probably actually should have just kept it hidden, but whatever, uh, and then he gets to steal. He has to take a tag. I don't know. He loses his third Rizeki. I'm really surprised he installed that Rizeki, but if he can stall out the game long enough, it'll be worth it, I guess. Considering that he had Angolo and Stimhack in hand, dropping the Rizeki last turn wasn't isn't as as weird of a move. Um So what do we got here? Um let's draw Uh, how much bad pub do I have? Two. Hmm. We're not really in a good spot here. Let's go ahead and play too big to fail, and then we'll throw this on uh, R and D here. Then we'll uh, do the NGO um, next turn. Which I guess he has to run, because we're on game point, so that's pretty cool. So he's going to clear out his extra tags. Man, he's so poor. He said he thinks it's over for him, but I don't think it is. 
install into server 2 advance advance this really probably isn't going to do anything I probably should have actually used my second action to install the enigma over R&D although holding it in hand could be really valuable up oh, there's the oak town so we have two bad pub jeez I really need like a border control or something draw draw hey there's border control Well, all right. Border control is pretty good here. So we we pop the NGO and then we go Prysec, um, Prysec Oak Town, advance the Oak Town. He just liberates up this turn. If I had an Atlas counter, I mean, you know, the SDS and the Atlas counter are probably about equal strength, given well, not given what I got with the SDS, but. Um, the Atlas counter uh, really gets you that last, you know, that last high-profile target that you need. Or the Consulting Visit gets you the same thing, which I took out, right? I don't think I have the Consulting Visit in here anymore. So, 1 in 29. <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate I drew the MGO when he did because he, uh, yeah, he's going to make a run here, which is bad for me. Especially if he gets a hostile out of it. Oh, I should have rezzed. Oh, crap. That was a bad move. I could have NGO'd and then rezzed the Data Raven. Whoops. Why did he run with so little money? Hmm. Alright. So we res take 8. Install into server 2, install into server 2, and advance. I mean, I think we just jam. It's probably the best move. I have a border control, so, you know, if he goes triple click on liberated and runs, I just straight up win. Um, if he double clicks liberated, uh, he still can't use Angolo twice on the ice wall, so I'm pretty sure it's just a guaranteed win. Uh, I mean, he runs R&D three times. I could win off of that. What is that? What is this? Host Icebreaker returns to his base strength at the end of each turn. Okay. Cool. Gebrselasi. Gebrselasi. Hm. Huh. I don't think that helps him here. That's not going to help him actually on this run on on the remote at all a stim hack ah uh, interesting okay so okay great so we're just going to res border control and not use it and then Kit turns the first one, huh? I didn't see that he said something after he played the stim hack. Oh, I can make that bigger, that's nice. Uh, you're... Go for it. Just, It's not really going to matter um, that he d he wants to undo his Geber Lassasi because Geb Geber Selassie. 
Is that an E or an F? Selassie. Geber Selassie. Sure. So he so he stim hacks here, he loses his last card. There I mean he doesn't like he can't get in. Because well, right? He can't get in because he can't use Angolo on the ice wall two times. No more action. Border control is good. No more action. Makes it a code gate, and then he breaks it, and then I use this to end the run. Then he has two more clicks, but unless he, like, like, I, I don't think there's anything that, like, <laughs> gets him a barrier breaker to get into that remote. Loses an Akamatsu. Oh. I don't know why border control didn't trash itself. Oh, maybe I did. I think maybe I think maybe I clicked the wrong button on the border control. Whoops. Cuz I forgot there's an end the run and then there's a trash end the run button. All right, what else you got? Two clicks. I have another border control in hand. Recurring border controls. He's gonna take four. He still can't get in. And Golo kit's pretty darn good here. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this guy. Why not? Wants me to fire the trace? Sure. I'm not going to boost it. Too much bad pub. Mm. The Data Raven is definitely a lot worse with the bad pub. Oh, <laughs> man. It's a close one. Boom. GG. Well played. Advance. I love Oaktown, man. What a great card. Huh. Look at all that text. Yeah, the stim hack on the Angolo was very good. Um, and... I mean, really, all he just needed was just, like, one other type of break. I mean, the really, it, it was really border control, right? If it um, if it hadn't been border control, he would have got in one time, which is all he needed. Uh, and... Huh. Should have said bye. Oh, no. I'm so focused. Um, he would have been able to get in... Uh, but border control forces two runs, and uh, a setup like that for Kit is definitely not oriented that way. But if he had a barrier breaker, he would have been fine. Got to get that uh, breach card or whatever it's called. All right, well, that was good. Glad we won a game, huh? All right, let's go ahead and uh, grab some Reina, huh? Ugh. Did I fit a labor rights in here? All right. Do do do. Play two runner games. So this is a uh, pub.
Halangi deck that I made um, with Reyna. I like Reyna. Um, and it's just, it's a really, really trash heavy deck. Um, so we used Palangi Paperclip to basically break everything and then knifed it. There's definitely some nombos um, with the deck, like you can't install the Paperclip um, if you use the if you use the Palangi because the Paperclip trigger happens before the Palangi. Um, so, I don't know. Here we go. Paperclip Street Perletto. That's nice. Actually, we've got Sure Gamble, Paperclip, Hippo. Uh, so, this is a pretty solid start. It feels a bit slow. So, the I mean, these Titan decks are really good against this type of thing. Hmm. I guess we'll... Um, oh, too big to fail. Nice. Gamble. We'll throw down the Peddler. We get a Hippo, a Turning Wheel, and an I've Had Worse. Um, hmm. Well, now that I've drawn my Masazi... Uh, well, I've got my Inject, too. Let's see. So he scores a Hostile. Okay. Sure. Uh, I guess I'm going to throw down the Inject now, then. So he's got two bad pub. That's great. No problem. Uh, yeah, I don't have a I don't have a claw on my street peddler. Uh, let's play inject. What do we lose here? Oh, there goes a Palangi and an imp. That well, that's actually not the end of the world. Um, we'll go ahead and throw down a clone ship for the imp. We'll run R&D. Clone ship the imp. Hostile takeover. We'll steal it. And then we'll imp the next card. Afshar. What is that? A, that's a code gate? Let's trash it. Why not? Hopefully it doesn't hit us with like a mega hard hitting news or some crazy stuff. That would be pretty painful. Um, actually, it would have been nice to keep my clone ship for Palangi here. Let's throw it on our peddler. What do we got? Sure Gamble, Liberated, Daily Casts. Yeah, let's throw it on our Daily Casts. And then next turn, we can just Quadra Liberated. I'm really just digging for Palangi here um, so that I can throw it on my paperclip and just run. Get him to res some stuff and then blow it up with Hippo. Uh, I could probably take out some nice combo tools from HQ with this imp here. Um, I don't know what he's going for, but since he's just building, um, let's draw one card. Hmm, not what I want. Let's install paperclip, and then we'll use the street peddler. What? Oh shit! Oops. I want to do that in reverse order. Uh, nothing's nothing's in a bad spot here, right? Okay. Um, let's install Liberated. Uh, click. Click. And then install Paperclip. Alright, much better. I just realized I didn't have enough to install the, the Liberated. You know what I should have done? Is I should have Street Peddlered during a run, though. And then I could have uh, gotten the two credits, the two bad pub to install it for cheaper. I probably should have installed this turning wheel earlier, but I'm, I really don't want to lose my hippo. I'm really scared to lose my hippo. So what do we think he's got over this remote, huh? Like, an archer or something? If that's the case, it's, it's not really that big of a problem. So let's draw. Hopefully we draw into a clone chip or a palangi. No. Let's run and see what we got here. If it's like an archer, then, you know... It's not the end of the world. Oh, great. It's a border control. So we'll pay two. And that's really good knowledge for us, too. And he can use that to uh, destroy something later. 
pay one to trash. And then uh, let's go ahead and take four and just install our single thing. I don't know if it's worth it to use my hippo. Whoa, what are we what are we doing here? Okay, red level clearance. I heard this card is insanely good for Titan. He's gonna gain a click, okay. No problem. No problem. Dig for Palangi. I need my Palangi. So I have three clone ships in this deck though. Um and, and then I have one more Palangi, so. I wonder what he's holding in hand. What do you think? Oh, is that the wrong server? What? How you have three red level clearances, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, reconstruction, sure. And then he dedicates No clot. And then he scores a two counter atlas. Wait, what the hell just happened? Right. Okay. Sec. Got a. I gotta process what's going on here. Okay, so red level allows you to gain a credit and install a non-agenda card. And then what he installs is the reconstruction contract, which allows him to basically kind of get that. Uh, normally, you install the agenda, install reconstruction, and then play. Uh, and then play Dedication Ceremony, but since he kind of got that, quote, free install on the Reconstruction, he was able to get uh, an Advancement, which is a big deal. Woo! New Titan stuff. Um, okay, so... Let's draw... Okay, we got our Nobby, that's nice. Sure, let's, uh, let's run HQ. I mean, like, what if he's just got... We'll let all the subroutines fire here. And then we'll run R&D. And mostly I'm just kind of, like, desperation forcing him to res at this point since I haven't drawn into my Palangi and I, I need to start stealing his atlases. It might be, like, a, uh, a Tythonium, but if it is, then that's... That's not very good for him right now. Uh, because because it's a barrier. Um, but Tythonium would be a good card. With his hostile scored and everything. Huh. I mean, maybe it's like a Mausolus or just like a Hordum, I guess. If it is, it turns off his fast advance for at least one turn. He really needs to keep me out because this whole reconstruction contract thing is, uh, is, uh, is a lot of cards... For a combo. Let's place a virus on imp. Too big to fail. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that means he's probably going to score another agenda this turn. Which means I'm running out of time. On the other hand, it means I get two cards on R&D next turn. And if one of them happens to be a atlas... Huh. Okay. I actually don't really have a solid way to get through this Afshar. Um, I don't have a Black Orchestra or anything in this deck. I don't actually have any Standard Breakers. It's just Paperclip and David and something else. So I'm guessing he's probably got combo tools in hand is what he's holding on to. Uh, let's draw. That's not helpful. Um, install a Masazi. So that way when we run R&D, we actually have more, uh, well... Whatever. Knob carry is still just going on imps, so I guess that doesn't really... Well, we get extra counters for that, though, which um, could be useful later. Oh, a baddie. Interesting. Pay one to trash, and we'll run R&D. So, I mean, he's clearly digging for stuff at this point. So, uh, running R&D is probably a reasonable move. Ah, there we go. I got his atlas. Nice. All right, that's great. It's just like the old NVN, where if you steal the agendas, you turn off the victory condition. It's just, I mean, it, it, you know, from a balanced, I mean, I understand that that's, that's just kind of, it, it's balanced, right? It's not particularly balanced, because the odds of actually stealing the agenda are a lot lower than the odds of actually scoring the agenda, which is why it's so good. But, uh, you know, that's always a nice boon when you manage to nab that Astro script. Atlas script. 
What do we got? What is that? A hostel? Interesting. Okay. Ah, man, what in the world could be on his R&D? I'm actually going to run R&D now. Let's see what we got. All right, so he's not resting. I have no idea what that could be. Um, But this is super good for us. Oh, <laughs> cyber deaths. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so we lose our Nobby, which sucks. We lose our, our Nob Kiri imp counter here, which is really painful. Uh, although we could just get another one. Uh, hedge fund? Okay, sure. Ah, there's our clone chip. Excellent. Okay. So, now we can run R&D. We, and, uh, you know, hitting that cyberdex sucked, but actually, it's amazing to hit cyberdex because, um... When you're running this whole paperclip Palangi combo here, if if he cyberdexes in the middle of a run when I hit an archer and I need that Palangi counter to break his archer, I'm toast. So he's going to hedge fund. I wonder what he's holding in hand. Man, that's crazy. Oh, hey, wow, smart guy. Um, So we're going to throw down a hippo. What did he fast track? Atlas? Okay, so he straight up wins if I don't get in. So I have to get in. So that means... Hippo, Hippo... Oh, nope, can't do two Hippos. Oh, but I got the second one on my, uh, on my Peddler here. So then we run, our, uh, we run HQ. We've got the clone chip. Let's see what he reses. And if he reses nothing, that's super bad for us, actually. But, so, it, it would be very good for him not to res, because then I can't hippo or double hippo. The thing is, that he doesn't know I have double hippo, because it's sitting on the street peddler, which is awesome. Huh. I mean, if he's smart, I guess, you know, like... I don't really know what he's thinking about right now, but from my perspective, I absolutely do not want him to res. Oh. Okay, great. Oh, man, he used a border control. That is just... Oh, wait, I can't even use Hippo because I can't break all the subroutines. All right, Afshar is immune to being trashed. Damn. During each encounter... The first time you break all subroutines, like, all right. So I was just, I was just wrong. Um, so that means we're gonna run uh, R and D over here. Um, and I guess I don't really know if we want extra turning wheel counter or not. Probably. So let's go ahead and pop that out now. We're gonna place a virus counter on imp. A roto turret. Huh. Sure. How badly do I want that in his hand? I'm going to leave that. Then I'm going to run HQ. I'm going to pop this out. I'm going to grab a Palangi. I'm going to use the Palangi to make it a barrier. And I'm going to spend one credit to break one subroutine. And I'm going to let this other subroutine fire to lose me two credits. And then I'm going to pray to the gods. Is my only... Is my best strategic move. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Red level clearance. And we'll imp that. So he scores his atlas, and that means if he scores another hostile next turn, we lose. But if we steal his hostile, then we win. Wait, why did he even play a fast track when he has atlas counters? That's interesting. So, oh, because he didn't have biotic. I see. 
sure. And he shuffled R&D. Yep, so he scores the Atlas. That's great, and the only way to win is to steal Hostile. So we run R&D. And I don't have anything to help me here, except for her Imp. Yep. I don't have Deep Dig tools. Sure. Trash Border Control. Marcus Batty. Alright, maybe we'll get it. 1 in 16. Oh, no, no, no. What am I thinking? Um, I already have his hostel. <laughs> so that means he's just looking to fast advance. Sure. Too big to fail. So what does he need to win? He needs... Um... I mean, he needs like a like a red level clearance. He can't actually win right now. I thought he could win, but I don't think he can. Interesting. So what's my course of action? What what's his what's his, what's he going to win off of here? How many uh bad pub? 3? I guess I'll just run R&D again. Oh, I guess I could use all of these turning wheel counters. Win next turn. I was trying to grab your last hostile, but I realized I already took it. So I'm not sure what to expect now. Well, uh, do I use my, my turning wheel counters? I'm actually not going to. Trebuchet. So now I have I have three, so I can basically run his HQ. I know he's got like a roto turret in hand. Um, some other stuff. I have another imp. So I could play I've had worse, play imp. Um... Sure. So I wonder, can he win right now? He can. Dedication. No, he doesn't have, he used all three red level clearances. So the combo would be um, red level clearance to install reconstruction contract, then dedicate, and then install his agenda, and then advance it one time, and then move the counters over, and then he could score a 4-2 from hand. Um, it's probably very likely he does have some agendas in hand. Although, I need to use my knob carry at this point, not on an imp. I need to use it on another Palangi counter, so. Hmm. I didn't realize how big of a problem Afshar is for ice destruction decks, but that makes a lot of sense. Well, it's, it's a problem for Hippo and Knifed, which are what I'm running. So I'm, guess, I'm guessing at this point he's thinking he, he can't fast advance something. Um, so, jeez, I should put one clot in this deck. Oh my gosh. I have the peddlers and I have the clone ships. There's no reason not to. Hmm. And he's probably trying to see how he can score something behind his trebuchet. But he can't score something behind the trebuchet because I have hippo. So if I run and then break a trash trebuchet with hippo and then get through border control and there's no reason using border control to stop me at that point so the only way he can do it is he slow scores an agenda by installing roto turret and trebuchet um and then <laughs> is capable of. <laughs> These uh, uh, Titan decks are capable 
of any more, so sort of just going by the seat of my pants. <sighs> Gotta go fast, I guess. Okay, this is, this is, this is not, this is, the UI is not what we want. Alright. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. How did I, ugh. Why does it want to zoom? Okay, let's see if we can fix this. Still good. Nope, not good. Alright, that's about the best we're going to do. <laughs> I think he's trying to figure out if his deck can win right now. <laughs> I mean, he does have two Atlas counters, so he could just literally go for the the hard score right now. But I think he's just not confident he can hard score. He just doesn't have enough money. So, a Chrissium. Huh. Wow, okay, so that's interesting. Um, let's, I've had worse... Take from Liberated. Okay, so his situation isn't any better than it was last turn, except for he drew a card. So I'm gonna... Install David and run. It could be a CVS, which could ruin me. Um, so it might actually behoove me just to run HQ. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Then we're gonna run R and D. Hopefully, I don't know. I don't fall to pieces, huh? It could be CVS with like an archer or something like that. <sighs> okay, so he's not gonna use it. So I I see the reason he wasn't resing that ice this whole time was because he didn't want me to hippo it. So he buys himself two turns here. That doesn't really help him that much. I just pay four to get through it. He doesn't want to lose his Tythonium. Gosh, Tythonium is such a cool card. Alright, so this turns off my Nobby. I'll put it on the Imp, I guess, in case that's a, a, a Cyber... Oh, fuck, I meant to use... Ah, crap. Will it still trigger... At this point, ah, uh, drat. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I want to use a, a double here. All right, so here we go. We run R and D. Uh, I'm going to access an additional card from R&D. I'm going to break. And then we're going to knob on the imp. Okay. And we're going to access cards from deck in case that's a CVS. A Hortum. I actually kind of don't mind him drawing. Actually, I do. I don't want to draw. We're going to trash it with Imp. And then we want to trash one of these cards anyways in case that's a Cyberdex. Oh, now I'm sad. And that's a Cyberdex. Which actually turns off my HQ run this turn too, which is really bad, I just realized. Oh... Guess I should have saved the imp for fast advance tools. Because audacity allows you to... Oh, interesting. What? Huh. Alright, so we're going to run. Server 2. We're going to break both Sebertines. Oh, we don't get an imp counter this turn. Shoot. I should have installed clone chip to get my second Palangi out. Oh, no, no, no. I don't... No, this is my first Palangi, I see. So he turns that off. Okay. 
that's fine. And then we draw. So he couldn't win with Audacity, huh? Draw. Ooh, another Imp. And then... I still can't get in, though. I need another uh, Palangi. And we'll career fair this daily casts. So I basically just straight up can't get into HQ until I get another Palangi because I don't have a Black Orchestra. So I guess the plan is... Draw, inject, install clone chip, run, and blow all my turning wheel credits is kind of the best case scenario here. And then um, hope I get uh, Palangi, and I probably don't. I probably do have to imp. Man, what's he doing? Interesting. So he's got like five agendas now, right? So draw, come on. Oh, nice. Okay, Palangi. So we're good. So then we... Install Palangi. Okay. Install Imp trashing our other Palangi. Run HQ. Spend a Palangi to make a barrier. Break one subroutine, let the other subroutine fire. So we'll have two imp counters for this run. Meaning we'll get to trash two cards, which is excellent. What? What's he doing? Did he click the wrong button? He wants to act. One, two, yes. Card. SDS drone deployment. Pay one program to steal. Let's um trash. All right, so, and if they don't, they don't, I'll take them back. So we're gonna, we're gonna steal with this. Um, how do I, is there a, what's the command to jack out? Okay, about. Um, help. Jack out, okay. Jack out. Slash counter five. Okay. Okay, does that look good? All right, sounds good. Now, I, I, I mean, I understand his perspective. He's saying that I, I don't, I didn't have time to use the turning wheel. Like I, I, I gave up on my opportunity. Um, I mean, Jinteki.net sure thought that it was fine for me to use them at that point. But uh, okay, um, I definitely, you know, I, I don't want him to feel like I was cheating. Uh. So I'll 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 be amenable to it, um, and uh, and we'll see how it goes. 
So what does he do? He installs the roto turret over HQ, and that buys him one turn. HQ is, I mean, are, are, I ran into this problem a couple times where people put CVS in archives, and I don't actually have any archives replacement cards. So I just, sure. I think he used uh, all of his reds, and he used two, I don't see them though. He used, oh, he only used one reconstruction. And one biotic. Uh, so if he installs like the roto turret, I mean, I can destroy it, but I have to use my Palangi counter. However, if I install clone chip, um, I can get my other Palangi out of the bin. So I actually think I'm I'm perfectly fine being able to run HQ this turn. Um, and then I'll use my turning wheel counters. Actually, there's nothing stopping me from being, uh, from doing clone chip, run R&D to get a se uh, another turning wheel counter, and then uh, run HQ. Um, and then I still get two imp trashes as well, which really hurts his, uh, really hurts his fast advance opportunities. I mean, like, he either has a handful of agendas or fast advance tools and ice that he doesn't want to install. Although, I think the installing the ice probably could be, um, pretty useful for him. So we've got draw, draw. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Hmm. All right. So here's the plan. We install clone chip. We run. Let's see. We run R&D. Uh, it, he could theoretically ruin us here in some way if he reses this. I mean, I don't know what it could be, but I mean, if it's like an archer or something like that, then we're fine. Um, I mean, I guess uh, other scenario is it's just uh, a macrophage. <laughs> a macrophage. That would be hilarious. Interesting. Now, this hippo is kind of useless to us at this point, so. Dude, I have like a deck full of knives. Oh, so that's the roto. Interesting. Um, so we're gonna Palangi into a barrier. Pay two. And then uh, trash it with hippo. And then I, I don't have enough money to actually get in at this point. So then I'm going to jack out. Um, okay, so it's going to cost me three credits. So then I'm going to... Uh, I could actually... Still get in here. Run. Maths. What do we have? Three bad pub. So installing the Palangi is going to take two. Um, oh, no, it only costs one. Okay, so I can certainly get in through the Afshar. So we're going to run R&D. We're going to pay four to get through. And I'm going to try real hard not to blow up this card. Not going to use the wheel. He's, pa he's pausing for me. How kind of him. Oh, wait, he only has three cards. Wait. Uh. 
want to do anything. What could he possibly do right now? Oh, I see. Okay, uh... Eh. <laughs> so, he's thinking about using an Atlas counter right now. And if he does, I'm just going to use both of my imps to trash his last two cards, and then he loses... He loses by running out of cards. <laughs> <laughs> so he can't do that. He really has... He, he, he really... He, he has no choice. All right, so he's so he's not going to do anything. I I'm still my plan is I mean, if he has an agenda here. Continue. We'll place a virus counter on the Palangi, a trebuchet. And then we run HQ. We clone chip out the Palangi. We use this Palangi make it a barrier we pay one credit we let this fire then we go uh, HQ 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 so we access four cards and we get to trash you know whatever three additional cards trash two so we get to access four Card from hand, Audacity, we're going to imp it, Audacity, we're going to imp it, <laughs> Dedication Ceremony, Re <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> four fast advanced tools, he actually... He actually can win right now, I th think. So he takes new construction. Wait. He can win. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. He did it. Oh man. Is if you had used Atlas to protect R and D to pull early, you would have lost to getting decked by imps. But you still needed to use the Atlas. Just not... Huh. Uh, like, I knew you couldn't, um, because you had no more reds. I didn't think about the new construction combo with, uh, reconstruction. But I didn't have any money. <coughs> any. I didn't have any money 
to trash something trashable. And if was no agenda, I would get no accesses on HQ. So it was a question of are they in R&D or HQ. I guess really that means I should have run archives. Saved one click, because then it's a guarantee. Not sure if I had enough money. Yeah. <laughs> Although the new construction really did surprise me. I was thinking he still can't score this agenda, LOL. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. use, but I always to be a big install five cards agenda for Gagarin. Man, that was awesome. I mean, that's sad for me that I lost, but uh, the only way that he could win that is if I ran R&D and didn't access an agenda, and he wasn't able to use his atlas counter to save it, nor would it have been good for him to do so. Um, still pretty cool, though. Uh, I don't remember... for, like, uh... uh turtlebacks plus, uh... what was that? What was that? Um... Uh, tour guide and then doesn't it have like some effect that like you you get to uh, and then then when it was 5x I would install uh, corp corporate town <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Wayland is all over the place nowadays. But I'm meaning to go, uh... See if I can figure something modern out for them all. You know, I've been meaning to to just go through and see if I can, uh... <laughs> that seems okay. I think I did try that, like, uh, five months ago or so. It seemed okay. Gagarin's weird. It's real hard for corpse to just go, like, horizontal. Also real hard to go horizontal without people getting upset. Still a lot of stigma around it. Oh, man. <sighs> Which I, I understand. There was a lot of economical nuance in those days. Um, 
But, uh, CBT, uh... Of the end. <laughs> Commercial bankers really just kind of... Uh, really made horizontal decks just a lot more like either insanely good or uh, honestly I would be okay with that uh, if we got rid of commercial bankers and bioethics I feel like uh, at least the stigma on those on those decks would go away um, <sighs> and then, you know, it might be a little bit easier to just kind of run those, try to out-econ your opponent um, horizontal decks. Which I, used to, I used to love playing those. Thanks for playing, Ender Atreides. Oh, man. You know, daily quest might be uh, might be really good. All right, well that was like an hour and a half, so I should probably call it a day, huh? I was hoping to get a second runner game in, but that one took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I'm I'm still I'm 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 ups I'm upset, you know. But uh, I'm actually also kind of quite pleased that he managed to pull that out. It's just like by the thinnest hair, it feels like. <laughs> That's funny. All right, anybody, thanks for watching, uh, and. Uh, Hopefully see you around uh, again another time. Bye.